Welcome to Insurance Europe Cover Notes. As you know, uh, Cover Notes are bite-sized webinar format of people that make the news in insurance. And I'm very happy uh, to be joined today by Stephanie Yoncourtin. Uh, Stephanie is a French member of the European Parliament and of the Renew Group. And Stephanie, um, you are a, a very important person for insurance because uh, you are the shadow rapporteur for the Solvency II Review and the lead rapporteur for the Retail Investment Strategy. A very warm welcome today. Thank you very much, uh, Michaela, for inviting me to uh, speak today on these uh, two uh, major files, as you just said. Should we get started directly sure. on Solvency II? Yeah, yeah. So, um, Solvency II, obviously, key file for the insurance industry, our prudential framework. You have um, managed to uh, adopt the uh, final report in July in the Econ Committee um, this year. Uh, what are the main achievements? Uh, what are you proud of? And then also, what are your expectations for the trilogue? Yes, thank you. Well, um, it, was, um, it was really a race uh, against uh, the clock to finalize the end, um, by the end of July. We didn't expect uh, that um, the start was a bit uh, slow and uh, uh, there were very um, uh, big differences, uh, di diver divergences in terms of, uh, of the group's positions. Uh, finally, an overwhelming majority um, voted in favor of it, uh, EPP, Renew, SND, Green, CCR, and I'm really happy about um, the final agreement. I think we, we achieved a lot and it's a, a balanced approach between all uh, of the group position. I mean, we have a, a strong mandate from the European Parliament now uh, to um, discuss um, in trilogues. And I'll maybe come back on two uh, major um, issues, which I think uh, uh, are the best or the, the biggest achievements among others. Um, First, what we call long-term guarantees and, and, and equities, you know, this amount of money that uh, insurers uh, need to put aside when conducting activity as a, as a safety measure. Um, this is a, we, these were very crucial points at a time we need to finance the long-term challenge, the twin transitions, um, digital and green, and, and, and the, the question really of uh, freeing up uh, capital for companies was the, really the center of our discussions. Uh, we uh, landed uh, on uh, modifying uh, some, you know, key criteria, um, extrapolation, risk marking, and I'm going to not dig into the details, but uh, technical details, but you know, I mean, these are very key criteria to uh, make sure that we free up some capital that would serve to, as I said, finance, financing the green the digital transition and enable insurers uh, to be more competitive globally. And of course, uh, protecting the uh, customers also. But this capital um, relief, um, as I said, does not uh, jeopardize the robustness of our insurers. So it's a really win-win situation. Consumers are still protected. Why we need to free up some capital and make sure that uh, uh, the real economy uh, will be boosted. Uh, so this is the, the first um, main achievement, I would say, from, from the European Parliament's perspective. And the second big issue was a sustainability chapter. Um, we definitely started with nothing. This was uh, the main fear, nothing. Um, and I remember um, the hard discussions we, uh, we had with the rapporteur and, and the shadow uh, um, rapporteurs from all the groups, and we really came to an ambitious agreement in the end. And I think the ambition, the ambition on this final text um, is, I think, what made the difference uh, for SND and the Greens to get on board, you know, on this agreement. Um, and on this, maybe you'd like me to um, uh, explain a bit on this sustainability. Uh, yes. <laughs> I think one of major uh, biggest achievement is the inclusion of uh, uh, transition plans in our um, EP position. Um, uh, you know, this has been, been done also in the banking regulation. So the question was, um, what um, can we um, kind paste <laughs> from, the, from the banking regulation, but taking into account also the specificities, the really um, big specificities of the insurance sector. You cannot 
cut and paste everything. But uh, you need also to have in mind that it doesn't to be too burdensome uh, for the companies. And, and the other element I was also happy um, was the inclusion of the uh, retroactive analysis on the implementation of climate scenarios in the ORSA. Um, it, it was not um, uh, something we wanted to have um, in a compulsory manner. Um, it was just an idea to include good practices for companies, um, but because it's something that most of the companies already do. Uh, it's, it's kind of a um, precision in the text, you know. Um, when, when you put in place new climate scenarios, um, it's somehow very useful to look at what you did before, um, to better do it in the future and to avoid um, uh, doing the, some errors that might, um, you know, be uh, detrimental to uh, your plan. Mm. And um, now the outlook to the trilogue. Um, I mean, uh, in the end, sustainability will obviously also be one of the topics discussed. Um, from um, an industry pers perspective, we have um, always pointed out, um, we have, of course, this whole framework uh, already with you know, the sustainability reporting files, in addition to Solvency tool. But how much do you think is um, in the trilogues um, for Solvency II uh, still at stake? Um, and how much will uh, sustainability uh, play a role in these discussions um, in terms of really getting to compromise also with the Council? It will definitely be a central issue. Mm -hmm. uh, we spent really a lot of time uh, within, you know, the, um, the, 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 the negotiating team from the European Parliament to make sure that we have a um, real ambition when it comes to sustainability and um, being able to, uh, you know, have um, uh, concrete measures, as I said, not too burdensome for the companies also to manage to get them on board with us. So it's going to be crucial, central. It's a bit premature to uh, tell you exactly where we are because we haven't uh, started discussing sustainability. Last week, uh, we uh, started our first uh, trilogue, which was, which was, you know, the very um, beginning, the introductory, where um, every institution uh, could explain its uh, political mandate, uh, its position. So now, I mean, things are uh, starting uh, seriously, I would say, and I'm would be very happy to be invited again to uh, <laughs> let's tell you more about the uh, outcome of these uh, trilogues when we will have discussed that. Definitely. Um, as you know, we very much hope that this is a file that will still be finished in the current mandate. Um, so progress, any progress made, definitely welcome yours. Yeah, uh, Michelle, I've got good hopes that we will um, sort of finalize it and have a deal by the end of the mandate. Yeah. Okay. Good news. Yeah. Um, should we also now move maybe to this other important file where you are the lead rapporteur, yeah. uh, the retail investment strategy package, a key file also for insurance, because I'm sure you are aware, IOPA has stated that 70% of all um, retail investment products are in fact insurance products. So for us, uh, also a file that has potentially huge impact on our sector. Now. What are, we have a very uh, comprehensive uh, package mm -hmm. on the European Commission. Mm -hmm. What are your views on it? Um, do you think everything that was presented works or have you identified some problems? Well, um, proposals are never 100% uh, uh, perfect. Otherwise, the European Parliament would have no role and the Parliament's got a key role. And you're right, and in a moment where we need to, as I said, finance the real economy more than ever, uh, this proposal comes in a crucial time. Um, you know that uh, still today in the EU, 70% uh, um, of the citizens have uh, still never invested in financial products. And so the text is not only about uh, encouraging people, citizens, you, me, everybody, to tap uh, in the potential of our European financial market. It's also about pursuing um, key European priorities, uh, financing again green and uh, digital transition, uh, increasing our uh, sovereignty, European sovereignty, competitiveness also, and securing our European um, marketplace um, uh, against the, uh, the US. 
So there are some very good uh, points, elements in the proposal of the Commission. Uh, I think the, the Commission really, um, um, really managed to uh, adapt the proposal to digitalization. Uh, by introducing the, um, this, you know, layering approach or um, by changing the default format uh, for the kid from paper to electronic. I think this, for example, is, is a good sign. Um, and also the modification as regard uh, influencers. I mean, digital marketing is just an increasing trend that we cannot ignore it. Yeah. So it's really hard time we regulate it. And um, I think trying to increase financial literacy for citizens, you know, is something very important, but it's all quite limited so far. And we definitely need to push on that and increasing training requirements also for financial advisors, for citizens. Uh, this is a major issue if we want people to get on board on the, into the real economy. There are some elements which, on, for me, don't work. The one I don't know whether you would like me to elaborate. Absolutely. I mean, I see three main points. Yeah. First, this kind of hyper focus on costs. Yeah. Um, it's really not about uh, costs. Uh, it's about all of the above. You know, meaning uh, you touched a bit on that. The the the, um, the other qualities a product might have. You know, uh, ESG guarantees and so on. All these factors, and um, and and ABIPS. Uh, do have this additional quality. Mm -hmm. And, and um, I think the Commission is wrong in, in just uh, focusing on cost. Uh, and you said that insurance products would, uh, under the current text, I think, be highly penalized. Mm -hmm. uh, although they represent 70% of the retail products on the market, I don't think this should be the case. Um, so this is one point. I think benchmarks, as they currently stand, um, in this point, there's no real clarity yeah. on the text on how this would be done. Mm -hmm. I'm not convinced by the idea of uh, uh, kind of comparing uh, thousands and thousands of EU products and kind of putting them into the same basket. It, I feel we will uh, end up by um, comparing apples and peer, and uh, it will be, uh, you know, very complicated that all unique products will lose their quality again. There is a question of quantity, but quality matters mm -hmm. now when it comes to investing in green transition, values, ESG. People are not only um, motivated, of course, they are about the price, but quality matters for young generations as well. It's very important. And inducement is also, of course, another topic. Last but not least, I would yeah. say, um, I think you should not ban a practice that does not work just because it's the easy way out. I mean, it's just, it's not, I think we shouldn't um, adopt a mannequin approach on that. Um, I'm not still convinced about the idea of a partial ban um, as it stands in the Commission's proposal inducement. I think if well regulated, meaning more transparent, of course, I think can allow for a more inclusive society where investing is uh, not only accessible uh, to reach a part of the population. We really have to make people understand that um, uh, they have to uh, uh, put their savings into uh, investments. And it's not a question for only um, a small part of the richest population. Yeah. And I mean, you mentioned now a couple of elements, um, but of course, a lot hinges on the issue of advice. Uh, advice um, and to what extent it will be uh, continues to be necessary. We have now a situation where we have, uh, I think, currently 14 pages of advice. Um, so um, the, do people need somebody to explain, to carry them through? Um, how can we make advice attractive uh, and affordable? That is certainly one of the key problems I think you will be dealing with. And you mentioned also beforehand, uh, we have, of course, um, a regulated market already, but we have an unregulated market with, with influencers. So um, how do you uh, make sure that you do not um, create an incentive for people to go 
uh, to a different uh, provider that lacks um, the training, uh, the the ambition, the oversight. Yeah, sure. um, and and in that respect, you know, financial education, yes, is a key point. So um, where do you see advice developing moving forward? Crucial points, indeed. Financial advice can, I think, be made more attractive and accessible by many ways. For example, I already said more transparency, um, but I think with more readable information, um, if we um, overflow citizens with 40, 50 pages, uh, they will not just invest. That's, that's the first uh, door um, which will um, easily, rapidly be closed um, we need to help people to understand clear, transparent, readable, accessible. Um, and, and when we talk about financial institution, as I said, it's not only for citizens, it's also for advisors and for influencers yeah. who know nothing or little, you know, they are just for many of them, not all, they're just motivated by the money, <laughs> by the, uh, what they will earn. Hmm. But um, they don't really care about the quality mm -hmm. of advice and the amount of advice they will say. Um, and so it's one, uh, I think, of the key pieces uh, to achieve the capital markets union, which definitely lacks. Yeah. Um, um, and I think what I've just recognized, we had our first um, uh, discussions with the shadow uh, rapporteur some, some days ago. Um, in econ and and uh, I think everybody agrees on the principle that financial education is key and we really have to uh, improve it a lot. It's a massive work, but um, the question is, uh, and I'm looking at now, if and how we can strengthen this in the RIS. We definitely need to, uh, to find the means to do that. Um, we need to empower citizens to um, dive into the finance world. Mm. There is a massive gap between uh, the US and the EU in that. And I mean, it's just a question of culture and this is a political will, you know. Um, of course, technical um, uh, measures will be needed, but first there is a, a, a political will from the, uh, all the parties, member states, from, I mean, the industry, of course, is very looking forward to that. Um, and there is a new generation of investors which uh, who is getting on board with finance via digitalization. This is very important. And it's not a market that would, you know, erase the rest, the old market. It's a new one in addition to the, I would say, traditional market. And don't get me wrong, I think digitalization can be very positive. Mm -hmm. We have to save this opportunity to move uh, especially for promoting financial literacy, but without protection, it can hit uh, those younger generations very hard. We see, as I said, the rise of uh, influencers, you know, so-called influencers uh, becoming those uh, financial advisors 2.0, a world generation of new investors. And I think it's very interesting, but um, mis-selling can happen very easily uh, from one uh, side of a screen to another because it's so easy to click mm. to think that you'll become a millionaire like that. And the implication can be massive for young pe people. So again, what I'm doing right now, since we know that on the principle, everybody agrees on the need to improve financial literacy is if we can do, I think yes, but how we can strengthen it Mm -hmm. to make sure that uh, um, people are well aware of the situation, has got the information, and are really actors, invest actors, you know. Yeah. We can help, but we cannot be at their place. So when I, if I understand you correctly, um, tackling the advice problem really with a combination of um, you know, using digital tools in a clever way, layering approaches maybe, um, and making sure that also, um, you know, we address the influencer problem and definitely do more on, on financial literacy. You have said earlier, 
And I think you are even on public record that you are worried about the very strong cost focus of um, the uh, current proposal. Um, I think uh, when we look at it, the new best interest test value for money benchmarks are exclusively about costs. Um, and uh, as you said before, this means they disregard uh, quality uh, elements um, such as uh, guarantees, risk coverage. But we know that people, especially, you know, your average consumers are worried um, about the little money they have mm -hmm. uh, and they want to make sure that they have some sort of uh, a safety net or a guarantee when they, uh, when they invest. Uh, so how can we help risk averse consumers to engage in the capital markets? That is really an issue. And are there ways to ensure the best interest uh, of consumers um, um, and assess value uh, for money that uh, you can think of better ways um, to really improve on the commission proposal? Um, I think in, in, in this point of this uh, hyper-focus on cost, on cost um, my view, the, the, the commission has drafted the commission, the, 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 the proposal a bit too rapidly. Mm. And, and I think the Commission has uh, definitely uh, uh, missed the mark on understanding why citizens don't invest and how to tackle it. Yes, of course, some studies uh, show that citizens mainly don't invest because of the price. Uh, they lack money. You're right. Uh, does this mean that they would invest if products were cheaper? I don't think so. I think first, citizens already have access to cheap products. They have access to cheap products and with digitalization, even more. This does not really change their behavior when you look at that. And developing our investment culture in Europe means explaining, as I said, to citizens that investing is not only for rich people, it's accessible to each, every of us, and um, it can be good for your <laughs> for your money for your uh, and uh, and also for the economy it's a win-win thing but second european citizens want to make investments with impact mm. they want to invest in green social products which are of course more expensive the eu i think is leading the way in the green transition mm. and we need to promote it i think it's we've got a momentum now if we don't do it now uh, now that we are in, really in the course of the uh, transitions, when will we make it? Um, and uh, we need to stop this hyper focus, I said, on the price of product because increasing retail participation is not only above that. And, and uh, it, it's above that. And um, it's, it's also why I am intending to uh, amend the value for money and, and uh, best interest test in my report. I'm, I'm still um, kind of sorting out all the uh, um, final details. So you, you'll see uh, when it's published uh, in a couple of days um, and uh, trying to see how we can do that. And, and most of the shadow rapporteurs agree on that. Mm -hmm. So um, I think there is a consensus. The question now is how we uh, amend it. Mm -hmm. And we are uh, really um, uh, discussing it at the moment. So again, I'd be very happy to uh, um, Lay, come back to you and yeah. explain how we finally managed to get a position at, at the European Parliament. And yeah, I would love to have a further discussion. Um, maybe we um, one last we have time for one last question. Yeah. Um, and um, again, on the retail investment strategy, let's maybe also look at disclosures uh, yeah. made to consumers. Um, we have um, currently, of course, an incredible amount um, on the disclosure side. Um, 339, I think, uh, are pre-contractual information. And based on the Commission's text, um, this would increase. Um, how do you feel about it? Um, do you think um, this is also an area that needs to be addressed and can be improved? Well, I'm still um, in the process of assessing PRIPs. And uh, generally speaking, consumers need more readability on the information that is given to them. And again, I mean, um, over kind of flowing them uh, with information 
um, will uh, just deter them to invest. Um, I think um, there are some there have some positive changes made by the Commission when it comes to PRIPs. Prips. For example, I mentioned um, this already, but I think the Commission really uh, did adapt uh, the proposal to a digitalization. Again, the layering approach, um, the electronic format now for the kid would, I think, definitely help, um, you know, and, and manage to uh, uh, keep electronic paper, but then really um, um, clarify uh, also and, and, and make readable, uh, much more readable information. And the introduction of a new um, sustainability section in the PRIPS kit, I think um, here is a, is a good sign. And, and I might see some uh, misalignment with all the other legislation, uh, you know, like the um, SFDR. Uh, and uh, this is my intention to look at that also. Mm -hmm. So again, good start, uh, but still um, some, um, you know, so, some amendments to make and really happy to discuss with uh, uh, insurance Europe uh, and with the members um, uh, of Insurance Europe to uh, work on that because, I mean, we're here to work for citizens, the industry and the European Union as a whole. Yeah. You know, as I said, it's really, really um, a win-win file. It has to be a strategy and not only a pure technical file. Um, so it has to be ambitious and ambitious um, is key. Um, if we want to uh, be ready, stand for the uh, these uh, uh, major transitions, green and digital. Yeah. Well, Stephanie, I can only uh, say um, you know and wish you a lot of courage. You are running against the clock on yeah. Solvency Two, and it will be a couple of intense weeks um, to close this file and. Wish you of obviously all the best um, to manage um, within this mandate and on the risk you have a major and very important file. It has a huge impact, obviously not just on our industry, but our customers yeah. and how in the future um, consumers can be brought closer to the capital market, which I think we can all agree is the common objective. Yeah. So all the very best. Thank you. Michelle. Thank you very much for the time and um, looking forward to further engaging with you also throughout the process. Thank, Thank you, you very much, Michaela. Thank Thanks you. you to Insurance Europe and very good um, uh, thing that we can carry on speaking about that. Thank you.